Hey everybody, it's Benny One and I'm back at you with our Star Trek movie review and today we're moving on to Star Trek Generations, everybody. 1994, just three years after The Undiscovered Country came out and this starts the next generation movies, everybody. That's right, and this ended, this actually started not that far after the next gen TV series ended, so they kind of picked up right where they left off with the TV show, which is pretty cool because... The OG cast had to wait years before they got to make some movies. So, this movie is directed by David Carson, everyone. And in a way, this movie is almost um, the OG cast kind of, I guess, handing the torch off to the new next-gen characters. Even though they were making their movies while the next-gen TV show was on TV. So, you know. In a way, it's a torch passing, I guess you could say so. Patrick Stewart is Jean-Luc Picard, everybody. The captain of the Enterprise D in this movie. Jonathan Franks plays William Riker. Number one, everyone. Number one. Brent Spiner plays Data. LeVar Burton plays Jordy, everybody. Michael Dorn plays Worf. Um, Gator McFadden, uh, she plays Beverly. She's the doctor, Beverly Crusher. She's like my least favorite doctor in any of the TV shows or the movies, actually. I don't really know why. I just, I don't know. I I just find her not as enjoyable as the other doctors in any of the movies or TV shows. My favorite doctor is the doctor, everyone, from uh, Voyager. He's my favorite doctor, and he's not even a person. So, uh, Marina Sirtis, she plays Deanna Troy. She's the counselor of the Enterprise. So, anyone that hasn't seen the, the Next Generation show, they have a counselor on the Enterprise, which is very different than anything that had happened before. Malcolm McDowell, everybody, plays so um, Soren. He is this scientist that is hell-bent on getting into the Nexus, getting back into the Nexus, and he is literally willing to kill hundreds and hundreds of millions of people just to get back to this Nexus to where you can basically live and time doesn't exist. That's pretty much the big thing about this movie. Um, William Shatner is back as Kirk, everybody. And let's see here, who else? James Duhon returns as Scotty and Walter Co Koning, Kohining, whatever, however you pronounce Chekhov's last name, Jesus. He, so those three are the original cast members that return from the OG crew, everybody. And there's a cool opening scene where they take the Enterprise B on its first little cruise just around our galaxy really quick. And, of course, something goes wrong. They get dispatched to go check out this phenomenon thing, which is actually the the ribbon to get into the Nexus. And it's destroying these ships and shit. And then the Enterprise almost gets sucked into it. And Kirk goes down to the engine room to fix something so that they could get away from it. But it ends up striking the engineering part where Kirk was on the Enterprise. And he is presumed dead after that so and then we jump like 78 years into the present time when this movie actually takes place with our next generation crew um giving Worf a freaking promotion in a really cool way in in one of the hologram rooms that they have the hollow rooms it's just it's funny they use that stuff a lot in the next gen show so the whole point of this movie is is that um Soren wants to get back to the nexus and it's a place that you go and time is totally irrelevant. It doesn't matter. You can live in any part of your life that you had. The happiest part, go wherever you want. It it just, time doesn't matter there. So he literally has to destroy a sun. He has to blow a sun up to make this nexus, the ribbon that they show going through space, get to this spot on a planet that he needs it to get to so he can get back into the Nexus. And so he literally, like at one point, they find out there's a there's a galaxy with a M-class planet that has like 236 million people living on it. And if he destroys the sun, um, it is going to destroy all the planets in that galaxy system, including all those people. So, of course, the Enterprise goes to try and stop him. 
well, mainly um, Picard tries to go stop him because that's one thing that's goofy about this movie is like there's little like plots, side plots that don't really seem, they don't really make a whole lot of sense and it kind of seems like they just forced them in the movie just to put them in the movie. They don't really fit in with the storyline very well, I guess. One of them is they they crash the Enterprise. The Enterprise D, the one that was in the Next Generation TV show. They show the whole saucer separation thing, which was like a huge thing in the first season of the Next Generation show. That was they were so proud of that goddamn part. Like I they loved that whole saucer se separation thing. Like, I mean, it was cool, it was new, but, like, they love that shit. They showed that off so much in that first season, especially that first episode. Good God. That whole sequence was, like, five minutes of the saucer just separating from the ship. Um, it's cool, but damn. <laughs> so, so yeah, the, the whole part with the ship getting crashed, I mean, they love destroying the Enterprise in these movies. I mean, they do. They love destroying it. Um... And we get a new Enterprise in the other three movies, which is cool, because it's a pretty badass-looking Enterprise. But, but yeah, that whole sequence just didn't... It seemed unnecessary. Like, it just seemed completely unnecessary. Um, and then, my biggest issue with this movie is the Kirk shit. Um, it was cool to see Kirk back, because Picard... You know, the Nexus, the ribbon comes, and he shoots the rocket off and destroys the sun. It destroys everything in the galaxy. And him and freaking Soren get sucked into the Nexus. So Picard basically fails. Um, and Picard kind of goes to his happy place where he's got a family, he's got kids, it's Christmas time. And realizes that it's not real. And he gets told that he needs to go get somebody else that's in the Nexus to help him beat Soren. Because he realizes that he can go back, when he gets out of the Nexus, he can go back far enough to actually stop Soren this time. And we learn that Kirk got sucked into the Nexus instead of died. And he's at a cabin of his that he owned back in the day and... Picard's trying to convince him, you know, none of this is real, it's all fake, and he kind of realizes that, like, Kirk realizes it, but then he doesn't, because they show him being like, I gave this clock to Bones, and like, but it's here, and then like, his dog is at the door, and he's like, you died, he died seven years ago, like, but he still believes that it's real, but these things keep, he keeps seeing these things and these things keep happening and he's, he's just like, this, this is weird. This can't be real. But then he's like, oh, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to start over from scratch and do things right. Cause, but then he finally wakes up after he goes for a little horse ride and jumps over a freaking, a ditch or a creek or whatever a couple times. And he finally wakes up and him and Picard get out of the Nexus to go fight, um, Soren and, that this it's one of the things about the movie that I just like the way that Kirk gets killed in the movie I don't know I mean he was being a hero I just don't feel like I feel like they brought him back literally to forcefully just do that and I I don't really know how I feel about that still I feel like um it would have been better off if they just would have left it the way it was um instead of having him on the ship and the you know the the enterprise b and making you think that he died or they could have at least just left it that way to where he went down there to rescue the enterprise b and that's how he died like i don't know but the whole ending that actually happened with him really dying i just i don't really know how i feel about it i don't i don't think i like it i know that so see so yeah, i got i mean Anyway, this movie, it feels like, I don't know, a lot of things I feel like were kind of forced in this movie. It's not a horrible movie, because when they focus on the next generation stuff, I think the movie is actually pretty damn good. Like, I think the next generation part of the movie is the best stuff in the movie, but the whole original cast stuff being kind of forced in there and pushed in there, I really think kind of affected 
the way the movie turned out because I do think this is a great continuation of the Next Generation TV show from where that ended. But all the other stuff that they kind of forced in there, I think, really affected the movie overall. So I'm going to give Star Trek uh, Generations a 7 out of 10, everybody. It's a decent Star Trek entry. And like I said, it's kind of a torch passing from the OG crew to the next gen crew. So a 7 out of 10 for Star Trek Generations, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed that review. Thanks for watching. And I'll be catching you on the tube later because I have spoken.